Now let's go ahead and take a look at the GFA tool, the Graphic Forecasts for Aviation tool, located here on Aviation Weather Center at aviationweather.gov. We can either find it under the Tools tab and clicking on GFA tool, or you could go to Forecasts, Area Forecast, where we used to find the old Area Forecast, and then come up to GFA tool. Remember, the GFA tool has replaced the Area Forecast for the lower 48 states. We click on GFA tool and it brings up this wonderful graphical tool. Now, we're going to go ahead and plan a simulated flight or talk about going flying this evening at 8 p.m. local. First off, this is in UTC, so if I want to see something in local time, well, let's make it easy on ourselves and let's go ahead and tell this little tool here. We'll customize it with our map options and say use local time. We can go ahead and get rid of those map options and say, okay, well, now let's look at 8 p.m. local time. So now we're looking at 8 p.m. local time, and we want to plan a simulated flight from Venice, Florida, on up to uh, an airport eh, just north of Tampa. So let's go ahead and back to map op. So let's go back to map options here and say map features. I'd like to see public use airports on there. I'd like to show the ID so I know what they are. So now we can see Venice, and we can see. Uh, VDF, that's where we want to go to is VDF. So we're going to be flying from Venice to VDF tonight. And let's go ahead and see what the weather is forecast to be at 8 p.m. for us. All right. Now, other options you have on here are things like, well, you know, do you want to see a Pyrep that's an hour old or do you want to see Pyreps up to two hours old? Do you want to see METARs at what level? Well, let's make them a little bit larger so they're easier to see. Satellite data, do we want it to be 75% opacity or like these forecasts, right? Do we want 75%? Do we want 10%? That's a little light. Let's make it 75%. One of the greatest limitations or one of the greatest problems with the GFA tool, really the only problem, is the fact that you have incredible control over this tool. One of the greatest assets of it and also one of the greatest problems because you can turn off some of these layers and you may think, oh, the weather's great, but you've just simply turned it off. So always consider coming back here and resetting defaults every so often. And if you're ever in doubt about what you're seeing, consider resetting back to defaults so that you can see whether or not you have in fact turned off a layer that is actually really important and you're missing real weather that's out there. So for starters, let's go ahead and hide those map options and look at what's going on in our local area between Venice and VDF here in Florida. Well, we can see that the flight category is selected right now, and we have the flight category listed as marginal VFR along the entire route at 8 p.m. Doesn't sound great to me. Let's see what the visibility is supposed to be like. Well, the visibility is pretty good. One important thing also to note here is that because this loads over the internet, if you have a slow internet connection, you'll have to be patient and give it time for all the information to load so you're not missing out on things. Just because things don't appear doesn't mean it's not really there. See how long it takes for some of those symbols to load after we zoom in when we have a slow internet connection. The next thing we want to look at here is ceiling. So CIG we click on and we can see our ceiling is forecast along our route to be about 1,000 to 2,000 feet. Well, it's not great. But it uh, could be okay for IFR flight, probably not great for VFR flight. Let's look a little bit further in here. So let's go ahead and click on clouds. So we're still in the forecast tab. We'll click on clouds and we can see, oh, well, yeah, we do have some clouds along our route. And it's looking like they're going to be broken to overcast for the most part along this route. And oh, there is our tops and bases. So let's go ahead and look at just the bases. Well, the bases are looking pretty darn low there. That's 6,000 feet and they're all way lower than that. Let's look at what the tops are going to be going up to. We can see tops somewhere around, oh, 7 to 18, even 30,000 feet up here. So pretty tall. And let's go ahead and click right in the middle there and we'll read all right, we have overcast at 1,600, tops to 7,000. And further up north there, we have broken 1,600, tops to 6,000. Doesn't sound great. Sounds like it could be an IFR flight, but definitely not a VFR flight. Let's continue looking here, and we'll go into TAFs now. So we're looking at the TAFs, and if you forget how these things work, well, we look here and we read we have plus 6 statue miles visibility forecast at the time of us going at 8 p.m. local. We have winds forecast to be 15, gusting 25. That's what these little barbs down here mean. And then we have a green dot forecasting that's going to be VFR conditions and 4,000 foot ceiling. Let's go ahead and click on it. We can read the actual TAF. We can see for winds 230 at 12 gusting 22, and that's where they're getting their 15 gusting 25, so that makes sense. We can see here in Sarasota, well, it's already marginal VFR. We have winds 240 at 15 gusting 20, plus six statute miles visibility shown there. Winds 15 gusting 20, 
just as we read there, and we have vicinity thunderstorms as well as broken 1500 cumulonimbus clouds overcast 4000. So it doesn't sound like very good VFR weather, maybe not even good IFR weather. Let's continue looking here a little bit more. We'll go into precipitation and we can see, well, there's a chance of rain along the entire route and likely rain a little bit further north of our destination. We can click here on thunderstorms and it looks like there's a chance of thunderstorms, 10 to 20% chance, isolated thunderstorms along this entire area here. We can click here and we can read weather, chance, rain showers, slight chance, thunderstorm. If for any reason you click on something in the GFA tool and you're not quite sure about what it means or what the abbreviation stands for or anything that you're looking at, you're not quite sure of how to make sense of all this, well, no problem at all. The GFA tool is wonderful, has a lot of information in it, but if something doesn't make sense, you simply pick up the phone and call 1-800-WEATHER-BRIEF, speak to a live human being, speak to a weather briefer, and they can interpret it for you and give you an even better picture of what's happening with the weather. We can even look at other forecast items here like winds aloft and we can select for the surface, for up at 9,000 feet, 6,000 feet. We can select turbulence, we could look at icing, any number of different things, and we can even look at observations and things going into the past. So here's what's happening right now. Well, right now we can see there's a line of weather and there's center weather advisories. When we click on these guys, we can read that, okay, we have center weather advisory for Jacksonville Center with uh, isolated thunderstorms moving from 270 at 15 knots, tops on up to 390, so tops all the way up to 39,000 feet. Doesn't sound great. <laughs> Doesn't sound like a good idea going near any of this stuff, even if we were going IFR from Venice on up to Tampa here. So I can say at this point, well, we're definitely not going flying VFR or IFR for that matter due to the convective activity in the area. If we wanted to see what other pilots that were flying out there were saying, we could click on the Pyreps tab we could see what kind of pyreps do we have and we can select for what level here, right? So I'm gonna say all levels. Well, we have one pyrep out there, flight level 210 from a Boeing 737 reporting moderate turbulence. If we just said we want pyreps at 3,000 feet or 6,000 feet, well, then we wouldn't see the one that's at flight level 210. One of the cool things we can look at when we're on the observations tab is the current METARs around the state, just simply clicking on it and seeing the colored dots to tell us what kind of weather we're getting. We can read those METARs like you'd hit on that private pilot written exam so many years ago of what's happening at each individual airport just at a brief glance. And we can even go back in the past if we want and see what the weather has been doing earlier in the day for us, what the radar was earlier in the day and what the METARs were earlier in the day, what the winds were doing earlier in the day to try to get some idea of the trend of the weather that's occurring around us. There's a number of different tools buried in here. You could even do things like observations, ceiling and visibility, say visibility, and you can say, okay, well, we have four in Venice right now, seven in Sarasota. When we go to flight category, we get a handy little colored dot that tells us, oh, well, it's VFR at these airports, it's marginal VFR in Venice, and it's already IFR in Sarasota because Venice is down to four statute miles visibility, anything between 1,000 foot and 3,000 foot ceilings, as well as three statute miles to five statute miles visibility, that qualifies for marginal VFR. So we're getting our blue dot there because, well, the visibility right now is four statute miles in Venice. So that is how we can use this tool to effectively plan a flight. It gives us an amazing amount of information, really just a one-stop shop for multiple data fields, and it's all GA focused. It goes from the surface on up to 42,000 feet, which is much higher than we're ever going to fly in most of our general aviation airplanes, but this is a GA focused tool and it's updated continuously. So as soon as new information is fed from the METAR station or from an AWOS station, it immediately appears here on the GFA tool. We know that all these different weather products are updated at different periods, right? TAFs come out differently than METARs and so on, but as soon as that information comes available, it appears here. There is no lag time between a TAF being issued and it appearing here or a METAR being issued and it appearing here on the GFA tool. The resolution we get with the GFA tool is currently about 2.2 kilometers resolution. So when we see these lines here for things like, oh, forecast clouds or forecast ceiling and visibility, that's on a 2.2 kilometer resolution, which is pretty good for FAA products. And this is going to give you the ability to look not only into the future, but also back up into the past when you go from forecast back to observations or warnings, and then scroll that timeline back into the past. So a wonderful tool. If you have any questions on anything that you see here, 
Then, of course, pick up the phone, call 1-800-WEATHERBRIEF, speak with the weather briefer. They can explain all this stuff further. It is not a replacement tool for everything else. This will not give you every single thing you need to look at before you go flying, but this can give you many, many different FAA-approved products, FAA-approved forecasts and observations of what you can expect on your flight. It is a great resource and can definitely simplify your flight planning process, but it is not a one-stop shop to replace everything else. It's a one-stop shop to give you a number of different resources to help paint a good picture in your mind of what is going to happen when you get up in your airplane.